What is up, everybody? <laughs> Welcome back to the channel. Dan Becker here. Thanks so much for being here today. In this video, I've got a, well, <laughs> after spending time with him, it's, it's, <laughs> he's a guide. He was a, he's a former guide. Former guide. A lot of experience on the trail, a lot of experience backpacking. We're in the Sawtooth Mountains right now, and I thought, you know, it'd be interesting to see what an actual guide thinks of my gear. Like, what is his, when he walks up on this setup, is it the right gear for this for the job? Is it safe? Is it, what, what, it, so we're gonna walk kind of one by one, and we're just gonna kind of show Eric what I've got, and I wanna hear his thoughts on that, so let's get into it. Okay, so we're gonna start with the big three. We're gonna start with the, Shelter first. So let's see. This is the Nemo Hornet Elite. It, that is correct. Yeah. Uh, what does this one weigh in it? This uh, is this is pretty light. I, I will put it up on the screen. I, yeah. I think I think it's like a little over two pounds, like two point two pounds five ounces okay. or something like that. So right off the bat, um, the biggest critique I have is just placement of your your tent. You're kind of like <laughs> coming in. <laughs> Uh, partially into the trees and definitely at a at a. I'm a laughing wonky, because we worked on placement angle. yesterday for a very long time, <laughs> <laughs> and he was part of that process. Well, to be fair, I took Dan's spot. He did. <laughs> this isn't a two person. This has got to be a one person. No, it's technically a two person. Yeah, but I know. Is, there's no. It's not. You're, you can lay person. it. So this is this has the same floor space as like other two person tents in its class. However, the headroom like peaks at like. Like the, you're not both sitting up in here. Yeah. So this is a glorified one person. This is like the perfect glorified one person tent. At yeah. Two pounds, you're gonna have plenty of room and it's, you know, narrow. So it can fit in weird places like this. Yeah. So I was pretty much the only person that could fit here <laughs> with this yeah. tent, so. Yeah. So, so to be fair, we gotta give you a little bit of grace there. But yeah, I mean, I think just in terms of what I think of this tent, um, it looks like a super solid tent, but it does look really tight and small for a two-person tent. So obviously, it's probably more on the ultralight side, so that yeah, sacrifices this, the, a lot of that. The nylon comfort. is super thin. I, I believe, I could be wrong on this, but I think it's like a 10 denier nylon, which is... Have you had problems with it getting uh, shredded up at no, all? No, I have not. Um, not yet, but I, I kind of baby it too, so... Well, you'd kind of have to. Yeah. With <laughs> yeah. 10 D, that's, that's really thin. Yeah. That uh, that feels like I, I could I, I could be I could be wrong on that. If I'm wrong, we'll put it up on the screen. But it's, yeah, it's it's thin. Yeah. Okay. So let's uh, let's take a look inside. You've, you know, you've got your your pack here under the vestibule. That looks yeah yeah. Tell me about my backpack. Pretty. Which good. is one you've tested lately, I think, right? Uh, yeah. Is this the Southwest? Yeah. So this is the Southwest. This is the 3400. So this is the 55 liter pack. The 3400 stands for cubic inches, which is also equivalent to the 55 liters that this pack is. I like 55 liters because, why am I talking? You should be talking, but okay. yeah. <laughs> so I, I have recently started using this. Wait, you didn't even notice this. My wilderness, guides should notice that I've got my wilderness per per permit appropriately hanging on the back of the backpack. It's visible to anybody on the outside. This is well done, well done, Dan. You are being a responsible yeah, wilderness user. Exactly. Uh, I do I do like that. Um, yeah, I mean, my general thoughts on this backpack is that it's not for me but I do really like it. I, I have used it. I just carry such heavy loads that I'm not a big fan of, you know, I basically have to put it at max capacity. It's max capacity, max carry load is like 40 pounds. That's right around what I typically carry. So it's pretty heavy for most backpackers out there. I do like that, oh, it looks like you've, you've got some wear and tear in here, yeah. but. Uh, this is this has been on many, many, many Yeah, you, trips. actually one of the reasons why I wanted to start using it was because of your use of, of the pack. So. Um, you know, I, I think that I struggle with how to organize these bags okay. because it is just kind of like dump everything in and then have to take everything out. I am just such a big fan of being able to either unzip something or okay. get, yeah. get at something from the bottom. So just for have, you having a big bag, the way you've been backpacking your whole career, whole life. Yeah, yeah, you've got your system ready to go that if you had to do this, you'd have to rethink everything that you've already sort of perfected. I literally have, I had to relearn how to pack a backpack, to backpack with, in this, a, bag? with this with a stack okay. bag. But the, the biggest thing that I like about this is that it will, you know, if you only have like, we're gonna go climb a peak later, hopefully, uh, you could use this as a perfectly adequate day bag just by taking okay. a bunch of stuff okay. and, yeah. and going. Sure. 
you know, where it, it works really well, even if there's only like a third of the stuff in the bag. Right, okay. I thought that was like, to me, like one of the strongest suits. So. All right, and then I can tell you've got the Lost Ranger in here. Um, which not I, because I wanted to have it, because yeah. it's not my favorite sleep setup, but because we're doing sort of a second comparison video between this and the Zen Bibby. So I'm gonna preface that. <laughs> okay, so I actually like uh, the Lost Ranger. I, I have positive thoughts around it. And for, for a while, I was like super, super excited about it. Although in more recent times, I've found, I think some other sleep systems that I prefer, but I think it's a super solid setup. And I, I like the versatility of what uh, that gives you. Uh, and it's, it packs up really small. Uh, this is the Dan Becker special. That is a Dan Becker special. <laughs> there it is. can't backpack without that. Mm -hmm. You literally exclusively backpack with this, right? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. I used this for about a year and then I was just like, eh, I, I stopped. I stopped using <laughs> it. But I did like it for a, for a window of time. Okay, so I also noticed that you are a ground cloth user. I am, yeah. Uh, what What is... What is that? Yeah, well one, what is it? This is really thin. This is literally the same piece of Tyvek that I've used for probably maybe going on five years. Okay. This basically weighs what? Nothing. Like, like quarter ounce? Three, it's like three, four ounces yeah. maybe. Essentially nothing. And I don't necessarily use it for waterproofness because by now it's probably not very waterproof. I use it for uh, just, just like abrasion, the tents that I, yeah, like abrasion the, resistance. Especially with a tent like this because the bottom is, I think like a 15 denier nylon. Yeah. So, and I've been in situations like in the desert where it doesn't look like there's anything there, but below there's dead cactus yeah. and then you you got needles coming up through your tent and so you know would this protect you from needles coming up no but in that situation i had also like a eighth inch foam pad under my which saved me okay <laughs> yeah that's good so this is one of the items that i won't i won't bag on you for using but i you're really concerned about that spot he was hanging off yeah the last time i've used a ground cloth was like 13 years ago okay and i just don't use them anywhere um, and I have never had a problem, even with really wet environments with water coming up through the Do ground. Do your cloth. tents have like a, like a plywood bottom? Um, it's like a Teflon uh, <laughs> liner, like a cooking surface. But okay. other than that, yeah, you know, it's all okay. good. All right, fair enough. No, there's nothing wrong with using these. And actually it will do, uh, the, the main thing for me is abrasion resistance, uh, just to help protect your tent. Um, I, I just, I literally never bring one. Uh, so the one thing I haven't seen though is is your med kit. Where's your, you have a first aid kit? I do. You do? Yes. Okay. It's in here with my rain gear. That is this right here. This is... Oh, the adventure yeah, medical kit? Yeah, that's the .5 and it's, a lot of the stuff has been changed out or used or over time. Oh. Uh, what this is, what is, is tape? Luco tape. Okay. So for taping up blisters or yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah. you can use it for a bandage, you know. Then I keep little, th those are eye drops because I had LASIK eye surgery, so I gotta. Oh, those are eye drops. Yeah, wet the eyes. If these are just uh, ibuprofen and some Tylenol in here. Yep. Okay, it's good to see that, uh, you know, you've got your kit in case, well, mostly, I feel like it's mostly just blister care. That's like, kind of like that's 95% yep. of all you ever need yep. is blister care. Yep. Uh, do you have uh, nail clippers? I have nail clippers. You got nail clippers in, in my ditty bag. Okay. I have a multi-tool, a very small multi-tool in my pocket right here. Uh, I've got the Leatherman Squirt <laughs> that, that, PS4. That is a tiny little multi-tool. Yeah, it's, it's awesome though. Yeah? It's so good. It's got okay. a, pliers and everything we, for like adjusting tripods and stuff like that. Yeah. So small multi-tool. Okay. Well, you know, uh, everybody's got to have uh, some sort of kit in case something goes wrong. This is not like a trauma kit because I am no. I'm not, I should be wilderness prepared in that area, which is on my agenda, but I'm not. Well, just the fact that you have anything. Right, is, right, right. Is, yeah. is great because I think most people will just ignore it and just be like, my plan is to just not ever get hurt. Mm -hmm. um, and that sometimes works. This is yeah. your whole stove. That's everything. This yeah. is stoves inside. No, good job. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Can't take him anywhere. Yeah. Uh, so you do not like using like chimney pots or stove systems? No, no, I do. I do. It depends on the trip. I, I love my jet boil. I'll take my jet boil on yeah. trips where I know I'm going to cook like more than a freeze-dried meal. Yeah. 
So, you, but you wouldn't like cook food. In this. this is just no. For boiling that's water. just for boiling water, drinking coffee, and that's about it. Yeah, I mean, so in terms of lightweight and space savings, that's pretty great. Do you use this as like a coffee cup too, or? Yes. Yeah. That's coffee cup, and boiling water mainly. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Stove fits in there, and then the small gas canister will fit in there too, and the stove. So all packed up. And I noticed you're rocking the Pinnacle. Yeah. Hey, this is my favorite food company. So I know you and I have shared that for a while. Yeah, they're super good. Um, this is my favorite spoon of all time. Ozark Trail. The 88 cent Ozark Trail spoon. Long handle, flexible. Can't break it? You lose it. It was 88 cents yeah. or a dollar. Like it's not the end of the world. Yeah. And it's, I've had this one for two and a half years probably. That's honestly, that's probably the best thing I've seen of anything that you have here. <laughs> your, your spoon. What? What are you talking about? Your 88 cent spoon is the best thing you have. It was, I don't know if it's inflation. <laughs> no, it's probably it's, like it's, 20 bucks, but no, when I got it, it was under a buck. Hey, if it's, we're going percentage wise, it's now yeah. 92 cents. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's all yeah. good. You're, you're going to be okay. Uh, but no, I, you know what? I got to shake your hand. I think you've done pretty well. You passed the test. <laughs> you just passed the test, folks. Thanks, Eric. I really appreciate that. Yeah. I'm gonna write a blog about what I really think, but uh, no, no. Follow up in the comments. Yeah, uh, you know what? People might get the impression that you just generally don't know what you're doing in life because you definitely put that off. Uh, but I think that, why, you know. Why is he here? <laughs> you invited me. <laughs> that was my first mistake. Yeah, that, that was your main takeaway, is big mistake. Um, I think, yeah. You pass the test, I okay. go back okay. with you again. Oh, what a guy, Yeah. what a guy. Okay, well you heard it. Roasted from a guide, a guide's perspective. Uh, we'll make sure we put links to all this stuff in the description below. Check out Eric's channel, Backpacking TV. If you don't know Eric, he's got a great backpacking channel that's just hit 100,000 subscribers. Pretty awesome. And also- Actually, I think today. Yeah, today. 100,000 <laughs> subscribers today. And then also he hosts a TV show called Epic Trails. You can find pretty much anywhere. And thanks for being here, man. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Dane Becker. All right. That's it. <laughs> Peace. We'll see you in the next one.